Hansu. What's going on, YouTube? Hot Soup here. The New World Dev Team dropped a team update video yesterday. It clocked in at almost 30 minutes. I felt a lot of it was padding, for the lack of a better word, so I just want to make a version that cuts to the chase and highlights the most important stuff for the folks who are playing the game or looking to come back with this next patch. So I'm not going to talk any further. I sprinkle some of my notes about what's being said throughout and even uh, some info that clarified some of these statements after the video was released. So I do hope you enjoy and uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more edits like this from me. Hey gamers. All right, you ready? Let's get started. All right. All right, well, 3v3 PVP arenas are finally here. We're gonna have it in the May build. You can just jump into the game, uh, go to the mode screen, uh, press join queue and get yourself put into a match very quickly. Uh, you can queue up by yourself if you want. You can queue up with your friend or with both friends and just have a full team. If you queue up by yourself, you will end up being in a team of three, uh, but we'll, we'll match you up with uh, similar level players. Um, so we do have level bands in our queuing system. So from 20 to 29, 30 to 39 and so on. Uh, if you do end up joining into a group uh, with a higher level player, so if you're level 20 and you're in a group with a level 60, you will be in the level 60 band, just so you know, you go with the highest level player there. So when you join into the match, you're going to get consumables that are given to you so you can use those in the match. You don't have to buy your own consumables, any of that kind of thing. But this time is that we are also bringing out the PVP rewards track at the same time, which is going to go directly with the arenas um, and all the open world PVP and other and the other pvp modes bow um we did a little revamp of the bow this month also so if you're a bow user definitely get out there and try it it's much more fluid than it used to be really fun to use dave do you want to touch a bit more on the rewards yeah sure we now have a rewards track for pvp and so basically what happens whenever you are in a pvp contest of any nature um you're going to get rewards for killing and being a part of killing somebody there are two main things you get the xp the pvp xp and then the salt and salt is our currency for this uh so the higher the more xp you get you're going to open up tracks that have rewards that you can buy with your salt um, and then you just can continually do that. And we're going to let you go through many different, uh, levels there to get there. Uh, lots of cool rewards, um, different armors, um, some PVP only perks, things of that nature. Mutators. Let's go into some of the new mutators. Uh, the depths, the depths is going to get mutated, but we have three new mutations that are also going to get cycled into the mix. So the first one is called overgrown. Uh, and this mutation focuses on nature damage and resistances. So it adds effects like uh, toxic, which is like a pool that'll uh, track down players and compost, which turns trash into healing areas for your allies. Uh, and then the next uh, promotion we have is barbaric, which focuses on physical damage. So it adds berserk, which is an enrage effect and then shattering, which deals stamina damage. So that's going to be a big one to deal with if you're a tank uh, and you're just you know, trying to absorb as much of, of the attack as possible for your team. Uh, and then lastly is a new curse. It's called Fiendish, which kind of uh, focuses on the nocturnal, if you will. So uh, it adds weary, which weakens players with a rend and then makes them vulnerable to slows. Uh, and then uh, blood offering, which stacks damage over time. So these three will start cycling in with all the rest. So they'll have different combinations that you get to experience. And along with all the new mutations, and then you have the depths, which is gonna add brand new bespoke reward. That I wanted to bring up, the Ver Varangian Knights, is that how we're saying it, Varangian? Varangian, yeah, so we're continuing their story in Eternum, and as they're starting to like spread out as this invading force of, of knights is seeking out uh, relics of power throughout Eternum. And so they're, they have some new encampments that are now into the next tier up, like past level 25 is what we're gonna start telling more of their story. So this is really recommended for players like uh, 25 to 30 to start on this next episode of the Ran of the Varangian Knights. Uh, so there's brand new three like POIs, three major POIs that are there. So they're really starting to dig in and they have one really giant fortress that you get to crawl through, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so brand new storytelling telling elements, some new gimmicks associated with those POIs. Uh, and then four new enemy types as well. So we have uh, the Crusher, the Spearman, the Hound, and the Mage. The quest for the second episode is granted by Abigail Rose, and she's just outside a new Varangian uh, camp at Sorcerer's Delve, which is in Everfall. 
Cover up. Let's talk about oh. the Combat Academy series. Yeah. So we asked you, our community, to come up with helpful guides, your best clips, your best Twitch clips, mm -hmm. where, you know, playlist on YouTube that's okay. curated. And you can use a hashtag, New World Combat Academy, to search those up to see if you missed any. Let's dive right in. Devs versus Creator. Uh, we have uh, three. It's going to be a weekly series. And the first one is on the 12th. <laughs> and then the next one's going to be on the 19th. And then the final one's going to be on the 26th. Okay. So it's three content creators versus three of our devs. Oh. Uh, they're going to be playing five uh, rounds, five matches um, of the, uh, the PvP arena. And we'll see, uh, we'll see who can take who. Oh, and another point for the, the creators versus devs thing is there's going to be a, an exclusive Twitch drop that's going to go along oh, with that. Okay. So if you're watching the uh, devs versus creators, it's going to be on the creators' channels, but then it's going to open it up directory-wide. Um, and the Twitch drop for this time is actually really unique because it's a battle chest filled with PvP-specific things. So you're going to find things in that chest that are going to help you in PvP and in arenas. Um, you can collect up to three chests, so if you tune in for each of the three, um, then you can get up to three. Uh, yeah, so go on Twitch and watch the, watch. watch the content creators who are involved, and then it's going to go directory-wide for, I believe, 48 hours. Okay. And that's going to go away, then it'll come back for the next event, and then go away and come back for gotcha. the next event. The 26th, that's the last one. This is for you, the XP extravaganza. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so um, we are not going to be doing a, a big update in June. Let me just put that out there. So we have the XP extravaganza uh, <laughs> during the month of June, just like uh, the folks that had participated in our double XP weekend previously, uh, where we had uh, multiple X or double XP on weapons, double XP on your character progression. This time, we're opening that up to double XP on refining on those skills, on uh, uh, gathering on those skills, and we're also opening it up for weapons. Um, so there's a lot of excitement uh, for June. We didn't ha we had the weapons previously, but we did not have it for uh, fishing is included. Um, since we released the um, the Tempest expedition uh, and the mutation, uh, I want to let folks know that as far as the um, the AI that have killed the most characters, Neshatune is at the top. Uh, Neshatune has killed over four hundred thousand characters. Nice. Uh, and right behind him is Isabella. Uh, okay. And Isabella has killed just over more than Thor. Just yes, Hold just up. over wow. two hundred thousand players. Wow. Uh, what the fastest M10? So the tongue Ooh, mutation um, already. The fastest completion times wow. for our our mutated expedition. So starting things off with Dynasty, the fastest run of an M10 was twenty one minutes and forty eight seconds. Wow. Uh, Garden of Genesis was thirteen minutes and wow. one second. Wow. Laz was just under twenty five minutes for. Tempest that has taken 27 minutes and 12 seconds. Um, all right, New World just finished its first ever Rabbit's Revenge. What did the team learn from this and any hints to what we can see for future events? Uh, th those are more of the size and scope of like what we call our smaller events and that was our intention with this one. It was a nice like uh, change of pace, uh, you know, introduce it like a new short set of goals for players to um, tackle uh, for a little while in New World, um, add a little bit more spice and variety into the game, and then, um, you know, go back to uh, the general gameplay. One of the things we learned, and I think a big takeaway for us here, is we want to make sure in future events that we run, it's a lot clearer uh, what players need to do or how they are making progress to achieve, like, all of the rewards. But yeah, I mean, uh, we want to make sure it's a lot clearer that if you are putting in the work, kill hundreds or thousands of rabbits. Yeah, we saw some huge numbers on the forums. Right, yeah, that, that um, you know, you know you're going to, uh, hopefully, going to net out into a positive result. Like, um, for this one, yeah, we just want to make it, you know, make sure that players understand, like, what's my goal? Why am I doing this stuff? And make it clear, like, here's... Here's you know what you'll get if you if you reach the uh, end of the rainbow. So so the next question from the players previously in the desync blog, the team mentioned that they will be constantly striving to improve the in-game experience. Can you tell us some additional fixes that you made to the to make the gameplay smoother? Yes, for sure. We still have a uh, dedicated desync team that's working on these night and day uh, 
And so we have a we have a lot of minor fixes coming in. We also have a couple major ones that we should have in for May. They're still in testing. We really hope they make it through. Uh, and some of the big ones and most notable ones will be when you're rooted uh, and get, leaving root um, and getting that animation stutter. Uh, it looks like we have a finally have a fix for that, which also fixed a bunch of other ones at the same time. So that should be a really big quality of life improvement. That's happening from the gravity well and ice uh, shower and all those those moves. The other big one is that when you quickly move your camera during an attack, it was actually giving you a positional desync. So you could actually pop at the end of your move to a different location. And we have a, a really nice fix in for that one right now, too. Um, we're still looking at the void blade desync. We think we're going to get a fix in. It's been a little bit trickier trying to get that one done, but that that's on the horizon. Um, and those are just the, some of the notable ones, but we're we have a, a big list of them, and we're we're still uh, going through them every day. So, uh, crafting has always been an interesting feature within New World. However, some players believe it to be expensive. Are there any changes coming into the crafting to make it more viable? Uh, yes, I think you know. First, we, we agree. It is expensive and it is, you know, uh, some trade skills are a little more arduous than others. So one of the things we're looking at is sort of balancing out the effort so that, you know, for instance, logging is a good example or fishing. Those types of trade skills are taking way longer than some of the other ones like gathering. So one of the things we're looking at doing is balancing that out so that they're more equal. Uh, another thing we're going to look at is, you know, uh, there's sort of like a a train to this, right? You gather, then you refine, then you craft. Right. Uh, and right now, the gathering is, is usually going faster than the refining, and the crafting is usually the slowest by far. So mm -hmm. trying to balance that out another uh, a little bit is also something we're going to be looking at. In terms of the value of crafting, like we do think there's some very valuable stuff you can get in crafting, right? Especially end game. I think end game crafting and super early game crafting are in, in, in okay place. Uh, the middle, we have some work to do on for sure. Uh, but in the end game, there's some very valuable stuff, right? Like, uh, depending on the weapon, like some places have great drops, but like uh, Hammer has a lot of great drops, but Great Axe doesn't have as many, right? So if you want to get a, a truly BIS drop, like you have to craft those. So I think there is value there. Uh, the requirements that you need to fulfill to be able to craft those truly great things and then the resources that go into that, we do agree that's high right now. And that's something we're going to be looking at. There's no sort of immediate plans, but it is on our radar. Okay, great. That's great to know that even you guys are looking into it. So yeah, I think no big changes for May, but it's like we're really taking a really deep dive look at that stuff and making sure you know trying to we want to get it right when we when we do those balance changes. They have a big ripple effect into how you know right. the economies in the game work and everything else. So we want to make sure we're we're buttoned up on that before we we, we send it out. So. We're looking into it. How about an update on the state of the economy? Ooh, good segue. <laughs> well, why don't I start? Uh, I think in terms of the gold economy, we're generally happy with where we've gotten to. I know, like you know, there was a, a period of time. There were deflationary times at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Coin but was a little tight. It was tight. For sure. <laughs> I think we've made some changes. The economy has sprucened up, and I think we're generally happy with the gold economy. We see players' balances increasing over time. Uh, but they're not increasing at such an alarming rate that right. we're worried about hyperinflation. So I think we're generally happy with gold. I think uh, Azoth is, you know, I think the Azoth economy has been sort of uh, ruined or wrecked with a lot of the fast. <laughs> we are aware that Azoth is a currency that needs a better home. We do have some very interesting ideas coming for that. Uh, you know, I, I like how it's tied to crafting now. Expect us to dig into that even more in the future but that's a little ways off. So uh, item disparity in the value of items mm -hmm. might be an area where there's some work to do, Phil. Yeah, the imperial economy side of things, the mats that you use to craft. Um, you know, we did notice a big deficiency in things um, like star metal and orichalcum. Oh, yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. so we are actually adding a lot more veins of those into oh, okay. the May build. Okay. So oh, okay. We, we took a look at, look at the map. We okay. looked, we found some areas where it was like sparse and I think... Ooh, okay. Really good. So yeah, so that's actually be, be something to, to dig into for the players when 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 the May build comes out. Like, what are the more, uh, what are the routes now? Right. I was just going to ask, did you take any away or we did not? Any? We no. Just we just added. We just added. So. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I just want to thank everyone for joining us. We've gone over quite a few things, including the PvP arenas. We dove deep into the events and what we've learned from it, and answered some questions that the community has been really asking about.